For the past 100 years, Missouri Farm Bureau has worked to improve the quality of life for farmers, rural Missouri, and all Missouri. Farm Bureau's success begins at the grassroots level, and over the past century, that success has been built inch by inch, brick by brick, moment by moment. Looking back on the history of Missouri Farm Bureau, one thing is clear, moments matter. Early in the 20th century, Missouri farmers are searching for new ways to collectively improve their industry. In 1912, Pettis County farmers come together to hire and support the first county farm advisor, a concept of the newly created Cooperative Extension Service. By 1913, this organization of farmers becomes known as the Pettis County Farm Bureau. Over the next three years, 12 more counties jump on board and form their own farm bureaus. They have no idea they are creating the blueprint for what would become the world's largest general farm organization. March 24, 1915, the County Farm Bureau movement changes forever. County representatives meet in Slater, Missouri, where they elect officers and write a constitution. This meeting is the birthplace of Missouri Farm Bureau, the first state farm bureau in the nation. One of the first adopted resolutions requests a Farm Bureau representative remain in Jefferson City during all state legislative sessions, marking the beginning of the Missouri Farm Bureau legislative program. In 1920, a motion made five years earlier by the state organization becomes a reality and the American Farm Bureau Federation is formed. After spending two years in Columbia, the official headquarters of the Missouri Farm Bureau moves down the road to Jefferson City in 1922. As its first decade comes to a close, Missouri Farm Bureau rides high on its early successes, but hard times are on the horizon. As it enters its second decade, Missouri Farm Bureau is deep in debt because of low farm income and a shortage of member dues. To pay the interest on a new $15,000 bond issue, the Missouri Farm Bureau Insurance Division is created by partnering with State Farm Insurance Company. At the 1925 annual meeting, five board districts are drawn across the state. Each district will select one representative to serve on the state board. Eventually, Missouri will expand to eight districts. In the same year, the first membership questionnaire is published in the Farm Bureau News. Just as Farm Bureau begins to see the light at the end of the tunnel, disaster. The crash of the U.S. stock market in 1929. Membership nosedive as farmers all over the state suffer. Crop and livestock prices fall to record lows. As membership decreases, so does the organization's income from dues. In an attempt to raise funds, the Farm Bureau Credit Service and the Farm Bureau Petroleum Service are born. Missouri Farm Bureau pushes forward but it would take nearly 50 years to recover the loss in membership. Facing hard times, Missouri Farm Bureau continues to push for programs that will aid farmers and get them back on their feet. In 1936, with Farm Bureau support, the Norris Rayburn Act is passed, which supplies rural Missourians with electricity. Farm Bureau continues its support for rural Missouri throughout the decade by creating college loan programs and farm family health programs. 
As World War II draws to a close, Missouri Farm Bureau has successfully weathered its first three decades and heads into a more prosperous time. After years of hardship, the end of the war ushers in a new era of growth for Missouri Farm Bureau. The decision is made to split from the Illinois-based State Farm Insurance Company in 1946. The Federation tackles new challenges, such as farm-to-market road improvements and cooperative marketing between producers, retailers, and consumers. By the end of the fourth decade, with a total of 83 county farm bureaus and a surplus of over half a million dollars, organizational growth is booming. Missouri Farm Bureau has proved its staying power, but with cultural change rising across the country, times are uneasy for Missouri agriculture. In 1955, legislators end sponsorship ties between Farm Bureau and the University of Missouri Extension. As a result, Farm Bureau sees a drop of more than 2,000 members. Farm Bureau finally has a place to call home. The move from offices in downtown Jefferson City to a brand new building near U.S. Highway 50 takes place in June 1957. As the country's cultural landscape changes, the Young People's Program, which will eventually become the Young Farmers and Ranchers Program, is seen as even more important and given an advisory seat on the Board of Directors in 1964. At 50 years old, Missouri Farm Bureau is looking to modernize its image. The new Farm Bureau logo is introduced in 1965 to replace the old green diamond logo. It will be the official insignia until 1986. In 1971, Farm Bureau partners with SafeMark to provide tires and batteries to members. Within the first year, sales reach $1 million, and the Missouri Farm Bureau Merchandising Company is formed. During the last half of the decade, the Farm Bureau's women's program takes to the streets and the airwaves to educate urban citizens about farming and ranching. They hold public forums and sponsor television commercials to promote agricultural interests. Over the next decade, Farm Bureau strengthens its voice for rural Missouri at the Capitol. In 1975, the organization is instrumental in the passage of the Farmland Assessment Act, which ensures farmland is assessed fairly. In 1976, Farm Bureau establishes the Farm Pack Program, a program which continues today, gives members a direct and effective voice in the political arena. In 1980, Farm Bureau has huge success with the passage of tax exemptions for farm equipment and the Hancock Amendment, which keeps government from imposing large tax increases without voter approval. By 1975, Farm Bureau is running out of space in the headquarters building. Ground is broken in 1978 for a new structure on a 73-acre site on the west end of Jefferson City. By May of 1981, the new four-story glass and steel structure is open for business as membership reaches 75,000. During the mid-80s and early 90s, Farm Bureau not only faces government, but the flood of the century. Why can they take my land that we've been paying taxes on and give it to somebody? It's my land. It ain't nobody else's. 
In 1986, the organization stands behind landowners as the government attempts to use old railroad lines running across private property for the new Katy Trail. The legal battle continues until the end of the 20th century, with hundreds of landowners receiving compensation for the unjust taking. Stopping the Natural Streams Act is a Farm Bureau priority in 1990. But as one carefully examines this proposed new state law, one quickly realizes just how unnatural the effects of this law would be upon the citizens of Missouri. The measure would create a regulating committee to oversee a system of streams, tributaries, and related land. Thanks to strong grassroots efforts from members, the proposition is defeated. The waters began to rise in April of 1993. The strength of Farm Bureau is clear when the organization comes together during the Great Flood of 93. 71 Missouri counties are declared disaster counties. Farm Bureau responds by organizing the Farmers Helping Farmers program to provide relief to affected farmers. Missouri Farm Bureau volunteers assist with sandbagging, food assistance, and cleanup efforts. As water recedes in September, Farm Bureau lobbies the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to take quick action to repair levees. As the millennium draws near, it's clear fewer young people are returning to work on the farm. Farm Bureau steps up its focus on agricultural education. 1995 marks the first Youth Leadership Day. Students from around the state visit the state capitol and learn the importance of being informed and involved. In 1996, the creation of the Missouri Farm Bureau Foundation for Agriculture marks a major milestone. In an effort to promote agricultural education and leadership development, the nonprofit organization sponsors scholarships, an ambassador program, and awards many grants to school teachers. Farm Bureau keeps fighting for its members' rights. The organization opposed changes in Missouri River management in 2001 and fought to keep the farm equipment tax exemptions in place in 2003. September 11, 2001 changes the country forever. Farm Bureau knows it needs to find a way to help. The Foundation for Agriculture sets up the America United Fund to provide disaster relief to victims of the attack. As the organization reaches its centennial, Missouri Farm Bureau matters more than ever. In 2006, Farm Bureau successfully pushes to pass eminent domain reform and defeat an increase in property tax on agricultural land. The Humane Society of the United States gathers enough signatures to place Proposition B on the ballot in November 2011. The proposal is intended to put dog breeders out of business. It passes, but lawmakers passed legislation in early 2012 to remedy many of the regulatory concerns. On May 22, 2011, a tragic weather event shakes the state. An EF-5 tornado tears through Joplin. 158 people are killed and 1,150 injured. The tornado causes $2.8 billion in damage. Farm Bureau makes sure claims are paid as quickly as possible, while also providing free meals to victims. Our industry, agriculture, number one industry in the state of Missouri, is under attack, I believe, and needs to be promoted and protected at all costs. Determined not to be strong-armed by outside groups like HSUS in the future, Farm Bureau helps pass the Farming Rights Amendment in 2014, which guarantees farming and ranching practices in Missouri. The proposition passes by a narrow margin and is considered a major victory for agriculture. By the end of the 2014 membership year, more than 118,000 people belong to Missouri Farm Bureau. Every county is represented and every member has a voice.
100 years. 100 years of hard work. 100 years of unity. 100 years of moments. And it's these moments, large and small, that are the foundation of Missouri Farm Bureau. From the farmer in the field to the staff member on Capitol Hill, every endeavor, every achievement, every moment matters. Nothing is in vain because all roads lead forward. Looking back on the first century and looking ahead into the next, one idea will always endure at Missouri Farm Bureau. Moments matter.